Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be showing you how to replace a crankshaft positioning sensor in a 2002 uh, GMC Yukon XL 6 liter, but this also applies to Silverados, Tahoes, Suburbans, all the Yukon variants of those, and the 5.3 is exactly the same. Their crankshaft positioning sensor location is identical, the procedure is identical, it's just that the 6.0 is a little bit bigger on displacement, but the procedure is exactly the same, so this applies to both. So let's go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal cable before we get started using an 8mm wrench or socket and then we can begin our repair. So this is where we're gonna to start today. It is underneath the vehicle on the passenger side. If you're looking straight at the engine to the left, and what we're gonna focus on is removing this oil level sensor here. We need to remove that because it's going to give us some slack when we take the starter out. So uh, this has to just, we just unplug it, it's real easy. So there's a little safety. You just get your pick tool under. So that little safety right there right at the end of my left index finger. You just lift up on that with a, a small hook implement. You probably use your fingernail too and just unplug it straight out like that. So this is where we're going to be working. It's basically uh, right underneath the passenger footwell on the uh, left side of the engine if you're looking straight at it. And what we need to do is remove this bolt here and this bolt here. This will drop our starter down we can move it out of the way and gain access to our crankshaft positioning sensor. And you don't have to take the wires off. Just make sure you're not hanging the starter by its wires. I was wrong earlier. These are 13 millimeter bolts, not 15. These are 13 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. Just uh, when you're removing the last one, just make sure you support the starter so it doesn't fall down. And here's our last one there. My hands might get in the way, I apologize. But we don't want this bad boy just falling and hanging by the wires. I want to make sure that it is supported and we can position it in a way that the wires aren't going to rip out of their housing because that's a whole nother job. There we go. There's the other bolt. Now we're going to take the starter, move it straight forward to the front of the truck. And we can just set it. We're just going to set it on top of the suspension component here while we go way up there for the crankshaft positioning sensor. So with the starter out of the way, we can see way up in there, that is your crankshaft positioning sensor. And you just remove the safety on the top there and slide the connector back. It's gonna be really tricky to show you on film uh, just cause I don't have anywhere to put the camera. But essentially you just remove, lift that clip up and slide the connector back. And then I think that's a 10 millimeter bolt. So you, hopefully you guys can kind of see it. It's that small connector right there. Just lift up on the safety and remove our connector. Pretty straightforward. So that is a 10 millimeter bolt up there. Sorry if my hand gets in the way. There's really no other way to film it here. I'm just gonna, it's not on super tight. Remove that bad boy, put that somewhere safe. On this sensor, there's an O-ring in the block that makes it a little tricky to get out. It won't just like pull straight out nice and easy. You might have to get a flathead screwdriver and kind of jimmy it. Go ahead and grab a screwdriver and do your best to just, oh, there we go, right on out there. I thought that was gonna take a lot more effort. And there we go. That's what your crankshaft positioning sensor looks like. And we can go ahead and take it over to the bench. All right, here's our old unit there. These go out periodically, it's not uncommon. Uh, they're just a small sensor and they do go in the fritz and they are no good anymore So what you need to do is go out and buy a new one. You can buy these at AutoZone SU 1178 or you can do buy the AC Delco version Which is like $20 more personally if it was my truck I probably would have spent the extra money, but we were in a hurry today And this is what's available and honestly, it seems pretty good Make sure it's nice and identical and looks great the only other tip I have for you is get some grease or engine oil. You could even probably use WD-40. Not a lot of grease here. And just put it on this O-ring. I never put an O-ring to dry. Just make sure there's a nice film of lubricant on that O-ring. And then uh, back to the old one for a moment. If you don't see this O-ring, this blue O-ring, if you don't see that, go fishing for it. Because if you put two O-rings on there in that groove, it's not going to work. You're not gonna have a seal and it's gonna leak oil everywhere. So make sure you have this O-ring on your old sensor. And now this is ready for the truck. All right, we can replace our crankshaft positioning sensor exactly the way we found it. Sorry if my hands are in the way. There's kind of only one access route here. 
and slide that in. There we go. And make sure when you're putting it in, kind of walk it in. Do this with it. You know, don't just put it in there and ascend the bolt and assume the bolt is going to uh, sink it down there for you. Put it down there manually. And that, that's, that's where that grease really helps out. Then we can replace our bolt. A 10 millimeter guy we removed earlier. Grab our 10 millimeter wrench, snug that up. Uh, if you're looking for a torque spec, it's probably like 18. That's uh, a 10 millimeter bolt. Just snug's good. There we go. That's what it should look like when you're all done. And we can plug her in. Don't forget that. It's probably the most important part. With that yellow connector. Make sure it clicks and the safety is nice and secured there. That's pretty easy, just like that. And then we can reinstall our starter. And we can reinstall our starter here, this guy. Make sure that goes into its home. It needs to be in. It kind of sits in by itself, which is cool. I'll try one bolt here. And then we can snug up our 13 millimeters here and try to do these as evenly as possible once they get snug. It's like you can spin one on like this. And then the other one, get closer. You just want to put the starter on as evenly as you can. And as far as the torque spec on these, it's probably like 25 or so. If I find one, I'll put it on screen, but I'm just doing them snug. They don't have to be hulk tight or nothing. They're not lug nuts or something. There we go. And then we can replace this sensor here. That just plugs straight in. Easy peasy. All right, so what I have here are the official crankshaft positioning sensor system variation learn procedure. So we're gonna connect our tool, apply the barking brake, lock the wheels, close the hood, put the transmission in park, idle the engine until the coolant temperature reaches 150 degrees Fahrenheit, turn off all accessories, apply the brakes for the duration of the procedure, and then step nine, use the scan tool to enable our crankshaft positioning sensor variation uh, learn procedure. We're gonna slowly accelerate the engine to 4,000 RPM, immediately release the throttle when the engine speed decreases, turn off the engine for 15 seconds, and we're home free. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I wanted to bring up two. I went over how to do the crankshaft positioning sensor relearning thing, but the scanner you need in order to do that is about $500. I'll have to link down below in the description if you want to invest in this expensive scanner like that. An easier option would to go to any local shop and uh, have them do it because it's only going to take them a couple of minutes and they'll probably only charge you about twenty dollars and that's to me that seems like a better use of money than uh, buying a five hundred dollar scanner you're going to use once and put in a drawer and never touch again so that's something to consider or if you really want to get involved in automotive maybe it is worth it to you to buy a five hundred dollar scanner and uh, use it for the rest of your life so you can weigh your options there but thank you so much for watching make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you next time